Welcome everyone to the Filtration, Flow Control, and Sparging Basics with Advanced Porous Metal Media for Life Science webinar hosted by Mott Corporation. I'll be your moderator today. My name is Greg Fesky. I am the product manager for the Life Science Division. With us today is Tim Goodart, Applications Engineer with Mott Corporation. Hi everyone, just want to thank you for attending. And John Rosenberger, Application Engineer for Mott. Yeah, thanks Greg, glad to be here today. Just a bit of background about who is Mott. We have a 60 year track record for making products uh, used by the most demanding customers in the world. Um, the largest install base of porous metal filters and fluid controls in the world across a wide variety of applications and the most extent, extensive metal alloy selection for the toughest operating conditions, wide temperature ranges, and world-class customer innovation center uh, becoming the hub for industry-leading innovation with the latest lab equipment and new technologies like additive for porous manufacturing. Our agenda today is to review principles of filtration, flow control, and sparging, to understand porous metal and its capabilities, learn how porous metal can improve throughput, accuracy, and repeatability in life science applications, and learn a bit about next generation development and design for custom fluidics, uh, and then we'll wrap up after that. Um, we will have um, Q&A, it will not be live for this due to sensitivity for some of our customers' um, information, but feel free to send us um, questions and we'll respond within 24 hours um, after viewing the webinar. Before we forget, uh, through June, we have a free on-site technical workshop for qualified customers. Uh, what that means is we will provide at your facility in-depth filtration and flow control training from our MOT engineers, uh, develop uh, problem solving tailored to your company's needs and have breakout one-on-one -on -one sessions with your engineers and MOT's engineering team. Uh, and to inquire about that, you can reach out to us at info at mottcorp.com. And with that, we'll get started on filtration basics. Yeah, uh, Greg, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about some filtration basics here. We have a, a broad range of experience in uh, designing filter products for many different industries. Um, these are five of the key components that we, that we uh, look at when we do designs. Uh, we want to make sure our, the, our filters are compatible with the, the material that is flowing through them. We, we like to know what kind of particle capture um, dish size distribution you're looking for and what kind of efficiency um, you're looking for to capture those particles. And obviously the flow rate of the, the fluid, either liquid or gas, and the, some idea of what your allowable pressure drop um, requirements are. And with regards to filtration, um, there's gas filtration and liquid filtration. Uh, we refer to our porous micron size as media grade versus micron because there is a difference in the filtration efficiency between gases and liquids. Um, and we'll discuss the differences in a little bit. But as you can see from this graph, um, gas filtration is uh, at a quite a bit higher uh, efficiency than liquid filtration. Yeah, and, and the reason for that, Tim, is the um, there is a, a common misconception that we, we constantly um, need to inform our customers regarding the capture mechanisms um, with regard to liquid filtration versus gas. Um, in liquid, the, the, the primary uh, capture mechanism is sieving, meaning that the, the particles are captured on the surface of the filter material. With gas filtration, there, it's, it's more complicated than that because there are several different capture mechanisms in addition to sieving. And that's kind of shown graphically here of the, the different capture mechanisms. So it's the, the capture mechanism is dependent on the particle size. So very small particles are captured by uh, diffusion, meaning the very small particles have a, a natural energy, which causes them to bounce around in the gas stream and will ultimately come in contact with the filter material. The, uh, the next larger size is interception, where the, the particle is bigger than the, the diffusion particles. It will flow in the gas stream and will eventually come in contact with the filter material. And it's important to note here that there's two representations of the interception. 
and that highlights the the importance of the depth of the media in gas filtration. It's uh, it's important that there is enough thickness of the material to capture those interception particles. Uh, the other another the next larger particle size would be captured by inertial impaction. That means that the particle size is large enough so that it has it has enough mass and its inertia will cause it to flow out of the gas stream and impact the uh, porous material. And of course, sieving is also, for the very large particles in gas filtration, sieving is also a mechanism. This, this graph here shows the, the effect of the filtration efficiency on particle, or the effect of particle size on filtration efficiency. So if you look at diffusion, the filter efficiency is very high for small particle sizes and continues to trend downward as the particle sizes um, increase. Whereas with sieving on the other end of the spectrum the, is, is very uh, efficient at very large particle sizes and not as much in the smaller particle sizes. Okay, thanks. We'll move on to flow control basics, Tim. Yeah, so for flow control, what we're looking for is we're looking to achieve a laminar flow uh, through the porous. Our standard accuracy is plus or minus seven and a half percent. We can go down to as much as uh, plus or minus two percent in the accuracy. Um, obviously, the hardware must be compatible with the with the application and the piping or the plumbing, the fittings, as well as the material uh, must be compatible with the gas or liquid. So there are two common um, methods for flow control. One is a, a flow orifice, which is basically a single hole through, uh, th through a uh, disc, basically. And the other would be our porous metal uh, material. The, the advantages of, of an orifice are typically their cost is a little bit lower and, and that you do achieve choke flow, meaning you, you can only flow up to a certain amount based on the geometry. The, the downside is you only have one hole, so it is, it is more likely to be clogged. You have a very high uh, gas exit velocity, which can create turbulence in, in some applications. And they're, they're very standard designs. The uh, porous metal, as Tim mentioned, were their laminar flows. You have many uh, hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of flow paths. So the clogging becomes less of an issue. And the, the main difference for me is that with an orifice, the accuracy is dependent on the tolerance of the hole that you drill, whereas the flow restrictors that we make are each tuned and calibrated to the specific pressure and flow conditions that is required in the application. And I, I would like to emphasize the, uh, the multi-flow path of the porous over the orifice, which is one path. As John mentioned, if you get particulate that hits that orifice, you can plug the orifice and immediately impact your flow. With the porous metal restrictor, you have uh, hundreds of flow paths, so if you get that one particulate that comes to the surface of the porous, it's not going to impact your flow. Over time, if enough pieces, particles build up, it will start to slow your flow down, but it will be a gradual decrease. It won't be an instant off. Okay, we'll shift gears a little bit here and go into uh, sparging basics. Designing a sparger, um, you know, we will ask quite a few questions uh, trying to determine the, um, the best media grade for your application. Uh, we need to understand the, um, the flow and pressures of the process. With that information, we can then calculate the surface area required uh, to get the um, uh, gas exit velocity we're looking for. And then um, part of the conversation with the customers is determining the proper uh, connections to make for the gas as well as for either the tank or the inline application. Using a porous metal for, for the spot, you can see the, the image on the left, you get a lot of tiny bubbles. And if you compare it to a drill pipe where you get fewer bubbles but much larger, you end up with the, the drill pipe has a lot lower surface contact area of the gas to the liquid. Um, so your gas to liquid transfer efficiency is much higher with the porous metal. The graph on the right shows that the Mott Spodger, uh, with or without agitation, they're pretty much on top of each other. And it also gives you the, uh, the best gas to liquid transfer efficiency. When you get to a drill pipe with no agitation, you can see um, it takes a lot longer 
to get up to, um, in this case, the dissolved oxygen level of eight. And it's difficult with a drill pipe to get much higher than eight. Expanding here a little bit on, on porous metal capabilities. The, the basic uh, concept of porous metal is to produce the various media grades of material that we have that Tim discussed earlier. Um, we start with irregular, irregularly shaped powders and they're, they're categorized into different sizes that will ultimately yield the media grades that we're looking for. Those powders are then put into forms and pressed into different geometries, disc cups, tubes, um, and that creates a, a, a semi-stable structure that can be handled and moved into a, a high temperature center furnace, which creates the, a bond between the um, interconnected particles, which makes it a very rigid structure, which can be handled and welded and formed. Um, each media grade is qualified to a to an ASTM standard bubble point test, which which measures the, the the required bubble size to define the media grade. And we we have media grades with nominal pore sizes from 0.1 micron up to 100, and that would be the nominal pore size. Each media grade has a, a pore size distribution, but that would be the nominal um, sizes. Okay, and yeah, this, these are, um, you know, this porous metal is used in uh, very vigorous applications um, across microelectronics and semicon process systems. Of course, the focus here is life science uh, and OEM and industrial applications. So pretty broad range of uh, applications. So, uh, John, why, why use porous metal over other materials for filtration? Well, I, I can speak to the, uh, the microelectronics um, world uh, a lot of the time. There are corrosive gases. There could be higher temperature where polymeric material uh, would, would not be suitable. Typically, there is a much longer life. So once, you're, once your system is operating, you can, you can set it and forget it, if you will. So it, it's mainly, and then, and then strength. In some cases, there, there may be um, instances where there's a high differential pressure where a, a polymeric material, again, would not be able to withstand that, whereas the porous metal it is a very strong structure and can withstand those pressures. Yeah, and, and so essentially what John said for uh, the microelectronics holds true for all the other uh, industries that we work in as well. Uh, basically, we don't really consider ourselves being co uh, competition with a, a polymer filter, because if you can use a polymer filter in your application, it's gonna be less expensive than, than a metal filter. On the other hand, uh, the metal filters are durable, um, they're cleanable, reusable, um, they can tolerate much higher temperatures, um, get into different uh, corrosive liquids or gases. Yeah, so, so this slide just kind of pictorially shows some of the customization. Um, we've, we've and, and Tim and I can speak uh, to hundreds of customized projects we've worked over the years. Um, we've we designed the porous assembly to fit into your system um, into your tank into your your piping system to meet the filtration or sparging um, needs so we we are customization is kind of in our wheelhouse so we we do it every day yeah and so you know uh, our primary or core competency is the porous metal and then what we do is we take that porous metal and we will apply it to different types of hardware depending on the application as John said, uh, he and I both um, have been here many years. I've got 15 years experience. John has um, 20 years experience uh, working with porous metal. Um, so we've come across thousands of different designs um, for different reasons. You know, so it can be as simple as just a uh, porous tube with an end, end cap on one end um, to a very complex, um, you know, uh, filter assembly where they're trying to minimize void volume. So you end up with um, filling, if you will, filling the inside of the housing with solid metal wherever the porous isn't, so you can minimize that void volume. Okay, so we'll go a little bit into the uh, porous metal applications. So where's porous metal used? Um, for analytical instrumentation, gas chromatography, high pressure liquid chromatography, and mass uh, spectrometry is some of the, some of the applications. Bioprocessing, you do a lot of either venting or um, sparging. 
uh, for bioreactors and fermenters. And medical devices, uh, they run the gambit of applications from respiratory care to um, low flow drug delivery that is implanted in the body. In this application, this is going back to the HPLC. Um, the porous metal is used for essentially retainers on the top and bottom of the columns. So the column manufacturers will put their media uh, in the column and the porous, the, in the intention of the porous is just to keep that media in the column and letting the liquid uh, pass through. The advantage of that is you uh, increase the uptime and uh, generate more accurate data with the, the amount of liquid that flows through. And for gas chromatography, primarily um, it's restrictors that are used to control the, the gas flow rates. The, uh, the advantage is it provides a uniform gas delivery. Um, so you, you get a steady uniform flow to, uh, to the system ensuring an accurate and repeatable uh, results. Um, yeah, this is a third application here, which is an example of one of the customizations we did um, several years ago working with a large biotech company. These were used in, uh, they're spargers that are used in bioreactors for, to, for cell cultures. And typically, or historically, these spargers would be welded onto a, a wand submerged into the bioreactor. This customer was looking for a way to have a replaceable unit and uh, so we came up with this with design that is removable it's an o-ring seal and so that it can be removed and cleaned uh, cleaned in uh, out of place and or they could experiment with different uh, porous elements uh, to optimize their their process this application is flow control for drug delivery um, specifically we're using a, a high tolerance uh, flow restrictor that um, allows you to control the amount of gas being delivered to the patient. So you end up with a safe, uh, effective uh, anesthesia dosage that manages the pain um, and protects the patient from pressure spikes during surgery. Okay, and then we'll get into uh, our next generation development and design here. Okay, so one of the things that we've developed here at MOT is a way to make porous metal by the 3D printing method. So 3D printing is, is a very um, active um, technology these days. So we have taken our um, expertise in porous um, metal manufacturing and are applying it to, or applying the 3D printing methods. Advantages of, the main advantage of 3D printing is it's not limited to geometries. There are, there are with the 3D printing, you can pr print very unique shapes, which are not achievable with conventional pressing uh, methods. Um, the other thing is you can, we can, instead of having to weld or press fit or, or otherwise add hardware to pores, you can actually print the solid material directly to the porous metal, which, which removes um, processing and uh, uh, purchase of hardware. So with, with this um, 3D printing, one of the big advantages for us um, is that we're actually able to print a sphere. Um, so these spheres can be used as a filter in your um, um, pipette applications. One of the things that we are currently working on um, and are in the process of developing is um, CFD modeling for the porous. Um, the advantage to this is that we can we can simulate the the process, the application, the flows. Um, for example, uh, we can do a CF, CFD model on a spodger and see exactly where the uh, the gas is going to go, how it's going to move within the tank or the pipeline uh, to maximize that gas to liquid transfer efficiency. You end up with a better designed product. Uh, you reduce the risk or or improve the, the process through the uh, the CFD modeling. Yeah, so uh, this is our some photos of our uh, newly um, commissioned customer innovation center. We are we are now capable of doing rapid prototyping for very short run and um, initial testing for customers. We have had dozens of customer visits through the through the innovation center, so that we can we can show our customers what our capabilities are. We we receive material in to do testing, and it's just it's it's a good extension and presentation of our capabilities. And this is a great way for our customers to come in and visit. 
and get some in-depth uh, information and training on a porous metal, what it can do, what MOTS capabilities are in designing the new products, new products for the applications. The, the prototype, uh, rapid prototype cell that John mentioned, um, we can typically, once we have a, a firm design, we can typically get the prototypes out to you in a week or two. One last time, guys. Uh, through June, we're offering a free on-site technical workshop for qualified customers. And again, what's involved there uh, is in-depth filtration and flow control training from MOT engineers, um, uh, problem solving tailored to your company's needs, and one-on-one -on -one training um, to understand exactly what you need and how we can offer a solution. And to inquire about that, just send us an email at info at mockcorp.com. Uh, once again, thank you uh, for attending this webinar. Again, my name is Greg Tedeschi. Uh, Tim, John, thanks for, for all this in-depth knowledge. And folks, if you want to reach out to us, our emails there are, are below. Uh, and we're open for any questions you may have about uh, MOT and our capabilities.